Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Shoei XSPR Pro helmet. New Shoei race helmets only come along every six or seven years. So this is important. It's important for Shoei, obviously, and also important that I get this review right because it's gonna be hanging around for the next seven years. After 20 years of Xperia's one, two, and then three, this XSPR Pro helmet is an evolution from that Xperia 3. It's got a very similar ethos, but there are also some quite significant changes. This one here is an early production model and we've been given sneak access so we can assess the helmet before it hits the shops in September 2022. I've spent around 300 miles wearing this one on the road and we'll run through the essential details as well as giving you an idea of what I think of it. The shell for this helmet is made from the same AIM Plus material as the X Spirit 3, which is a composite of different fibres to deliver the right blend of protection and lightweight. We weighed this helmet in size medium on our scales at 1,479 grams, which is 72 grams more than an X Spirit 3 when we weighed it last year. But I think anyone would be hard pushed to say they can feel the extra 72 grams of weight. The XSPR Pro is approved to the new 2206 standard for the road, making this the second showy with that approval after the NXR2. It's also approved by the FIM for use in international racing and Shoei's MotoGP, a main sponsor riders at the TT have already been wearing it at those events. That FIM approval might explain the marginal extra weight as this is a remarkably stiff and reassuringly stiff helmet for protection in those higher speed impacts that racers often have to deal with. Venting on a race helmet obviously is absolutely crucial. The main chin vent on this helmet allows air through the top of the chin bar to the eye port and the secondary one below it allows air to flow through to the cheeks through holes behind the cheek pads. When I'm riding, I can hear air flowing through the vents and it's directed to the visor itself rather than directly at your face so you don't feel it in the same chilly way that you might in other helmets really this is about lowering the temperature on the inside rather than giving you an icy blast of air up top there are three switches the main one sits in the center here and this reveals two inlets coming down to the interior just here if the airflow gets too strong the slider can be put halfway across so you're only uncovering half of the inlet the other two switches sit either side of the main vent and each of those exposes up a hole that comes down into the inside of the helmet. I find the central one easiest to use. The two on the sides are a little bit fiddlier, but actually when you're riding along with gloves, it's not too bad. And anyway, this is a race helmet and realistically a racer will set those vents up before the start and then just leave them like that. You don't tend to see someone hammering down the main straight in Mugello with their left hand in the air trying to open up a vent really, do you? As for getting the air out again, it relies on the principle of hot air rising. So cool air flows through the channels just here on top of the lid and then there are 10 escape holes in the polystyrene impact liner that allow the warm air to be drawn up. Air then gets into the scoop and is drawn away through four outlets on the channels. You get two on each side just here and then there are also exhaust vents that run directly from the back of the lid to the outlets just inside the air stabilizer here. The aerodynamics are a big part of the story with the XSPR Pro, but I'll get onto those later in the video. One of the changes that will be most obvious for riders who are switching from an Xperia 3 to this helmet is the visor. It's Shoei's CWR F2R, which is a racier version of the one on Shoei's NXR2. It mounts in the same way, but first of all, it's flatter to make it more suitable for visor tear-offs. Those are the things that racers use to get rid of bug splats in a hurry. And there's an extra element of security to stop the visor coming off in an impact, which I think is part of that FIM racing approval that I mentioned earlier. If you flick the red lever on the base plate towards the bottom of the helmet, then it disables the release lever for the visor, helping it stay in place when it's most needed in a crash. If you're getting frustrated and you're wondering why your visor won't come off when you're trying to change it, before you start tugging at it and grabbing it and ripping it off, just check that that lever's in the right place. It just needs to be raised rather than lowered. Now the visor lowers in five stages from fully open until it touches the bottom seal and then you push it down to semi-lock it in place on a lip just under the visor ledge here. To fully lock it, this tab then slides over and that stops the lifting part from being able to lift the visor up. To release the lock, slide that tab back out of the way and then push the section underneath the lip just here to release the half lock. I did find that a bit fiddly, especially when I first started wearing this lid, but quite a few helmets now have an arrangement similar to that and you do get used to it after a little bit of use. The sliding lock tab has a second function as well. If you slide it towards the center of the lid before you lower the visor, then it will block off the last few millimeters of travel just around here. This gives you a little bit of airflow to the inside, which can be very welcome on a warm day like we're having today. 
On the outside of the visor, you get posts for the tear-offs that I mentioned earlier, and on the inside, you get the pinlock pins. The pinlock insert is included in the box with this helmet, and it's a pinlock Evo. To anyone else, that's a pinlock 120, but for some reason, shall we call it a pinlock Evo? Either way, it's the highest grade of protection against mist that you can get. The visor retains the vortex generators on each side, which are designed to push air away from this part of the helmet and stop the lid from getting too noisy. So on that subject, I wouldn't normally comment on noise, but I'm gonna break that rule on this occasion. This isn't the noisiest helmet I've worn, not by any stretch of the imagination, but nor is it the quietest. The noise that you personally experience will always depend on the way a helmet works in your particular conditions. Things like the bike you ride, the kit you wear, your riding style, and also a load of other factors. But what I will say is that expecting a race helmet like this to be quiet is a bit like expecting a Ducati Panigale to be comfortable. You might find this quiet, just as you might find a Panigale comfortable, but Shoei wouldn't really have had a quiet ride on top of their check sheet for the XSPR Pro because it's not a high priority for racers. If quietness is a big priority for you, then really you're taking a gamble if you buy a race lid like this. So let's switch to the interior where there's quite a bit of ground to cover with this helmet. The lining material itself is pretty familiar. It's almost identical to the Xperia 3. There's a softer brushed fabric where the helmet's gonna be dragging over your face a lot and then there's a lighter material around the top of the head. The cheek pads can be swapped out for different sizes to adjust the fit. The standard thickness in most of the sizes is 35 millimeters and you can go down to 31 millimeters for a bit more room or there are three thicker sizes available if you want a closer fit. The cheek pads can also be put into race mode which tilts the helmet back on your head slightly to give you better forward vision when you're in a racing tuck. On the Xperia 3 you could do that without taking the pads out of the helmet but on this one you need to remove them, relocate some poppers and then put it back in the helmet in race mode. The top pad is also adjustable and the options for that are vast. There are four removable sections to that top pad, front, back, and two temple pads. You can tweak the way they all mount into the holder as well, which adjusts the fit a little bit. And each of those pads also forms a pocket, which lets you put an extra piece of padding in there to give extra support around the head. You can do the same on the very top of the head as well. So if you want the fit to be absolutely just so, then there are all sorts of combinations you can try to get it spot on for you. As well as removable cheek and head pads, the covers for the chin strap come out for washing. And in case you doubted this for even a fraction of a millisecond, the strap does up with D-rings as you get on all good race helmets. Behind the cheek pads, there are recesses for intercom speakers. A pair of Senna speakers sit in there perfectly and a pair of 40 millimeter Cardo speakers will also sit in there, but they do end up sitting slightly proud of the recess. There's enough room on the shell as well for the comms module. Uh, I'd suggest using a self-adhesive mount as I don't like the way the clamp mounts slot between the shell and the impact liner. They lever the shell and the EPS away from each other and it's not a particularly tidy solution. Another new addition for the X SPR Pro, there's a recess right in front of the mouth where you can clip in the tube and the bike valve for a hydration pack. Shoei are saying they'll be adding a specific accessory part for a hydration pack somewhere along the line that's designed to work with this helmet. There will be some additional parts in the box as well. The breath guard that we've got fitted to this helmet, you might find that's in the box rather than pre-installed. And then you have a choice of two parts for the base of the chin bar. The lower air spoiler, which I've got fitted to the helmet here, that deflects air away from the chin, or there's an optional chin curtain as well, which isolates you from the cold air as it flows around the base of the helmet here. Right, let's do the sizing and approvals. This helmet is approved to the new ECE 2206 standard for the road and by the FIM for international racing. It's too early to say that this helmet's ACU gold for UK track use, but if it doesn't get that gold stamp, then I'll eat one of these splattered with the world's hottest chili sauce all over it. It's the same story with the UK government's sharp impact tests. They are never done until the helmet goes on general sale, so we don't know what sort of rating it's gonna get yet but the last two x -spirits both notched up five-star ratings from Sharp, and if this one doesn't get the same, then I'll be absolutely staggered. Sizing, this lid comes in sizes from extra small up to double extra large. There are four shell sizes to cover that range. Helmet sizes extra small and small share the smallest of those four shells, and medium and large get their own shell, and then XL and double XL share the biggest shell. The last bit to talk about is price. The XSPR Pro will be released in three plain colors initially. That's gloss white, matte black, and gloss black. It'll be £699.99 at first for the gloss colors, and matte black will be £719.99. Graphic designs are gonna follow in March 2023, and they'll have a list price of £899.99. So those are the details. Let's get down to what it's like to wear. 
I've used this helmet for 300 or so road miles since it arrived and it offers typical showy quality. Everything about it feels really well made and finished. The shell is a work of wonder really and it creates a reassuringly stiff construction. The lining is very comfortable. It's really identical to the X-Spirit 3. So if you've used one of those, you know exactly what you get and you can tweak to your heart's content if you like. Although thankfully for me, I just stuck this standard size medium on my head and it felt like it had already been custom fitted for me. The peripheral vision is absolutely superb, especially in the upward direction, which is most important when you want to look ahead in the tucked position. The venting draws in a decent amount of cooling air, though it's designed to work best in a tucked racing position, so road riding is never going to get the best from that venting. The approvals for the lid, ECE 2206 and FIM, are also the, the highest available. There's no way of knowing this for sure, especially without seeing the test results that no manufacturer will ever release, but I would say this has to be one of the safest helmets on the market at the moment. Of course, all of this is about what it's like to ride on the road, rather than where the XSPR Pro is really designed to be used, which is on the track. And that's why we've snagged ourselves a more track-focused bike, this Triumph Speed Triple 1200RR, and we're on our way to Cabell Park so we can see how it performs at triple figure speeds when you're tucked behind the screen. So once I've done a few sessions around one of my favorite places in the entire world, I'll come back and I'll give you an idea of what I think about the lid in terms of its track performance. I know it's a difficult job, but someone's got to do it. Right, it's half past eight on the second longest day of 2022, and what an evening that was. Uh, Cadwell Park, Triumph Speed Triple 1200RR, which is absolutely amazing, but I'll do that in another video, and the Shoei XSPR Pro helmet. So the idea of those sessions was to get an idea of what this helmet's like on track, obviously, because that's what it's designed to do. Probably the best thing I can say about this helmet is that I didn't really notice it at all. Now, I know I was here to test it and find out what it was like, but helmets can only really annoy you. It's not like you ride around and think, yeah, this helmet's brilliant when you're having an experience like that and you're riding on a track. You just don't want it to get in the way, and it didn't. Aerodynamically, it was really, really stable. The system around the back of vents and stabilizers the, to keep it stable at high speed was working, and the helmet was no problem at all. The peripheral vision from the front, especially up and down when you're behind the screen, it's quite sort of tucked forward, this bike. And it was never a problem, forward vision. I remember that I used to race here about 15 years ago, I did my first ever Cowboy Park race in a showy X-Spirit original. And I remember I had to come down the sort of curvy straight at the back here, down to Park Corner. I used to have to shove the chin bar up to be able to see ahead when I was tucked in. Absolutely none of those issues. I was really hot and sweaty after the few sessions, but the venting meant that I wasn't absolutely overheating. And today we've been in the high 20s of temperature. So I think the venting works pretty damn well, especially when you're down tucked behind the screen. So that's brilliant. I can't really fault this helmet at all. It felt reassuring, comfortable, didn't get in the way, was really stable and very, very impressed with it, which is exactly as you'd hope and expect really from a top line showy helmet developed in MotoGP that's going to cost anywhere between 700 and 900 pounds. So that's that. I hope that covers everything you wanted to know about the Shoei XSPR Pro helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching. <laughs>